Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. Um, August 27th, 2018. It will be my grandmother's 73rd birthday, and instead of primarily celebrating another year of her life, the four of us, me, mom, grandma, and my brother James, will be hurling my suitcases into the small Toyota. August 27th is move-in day at Bates College, five hours and 21 minutes away from my Brooklyn neighborhood. That is the only accurate prediction I can make of what that day may entail for me. What a Brooks alumnus has made me ponder on for days is a conversation that may occur between myself and my future roommate about Brooks. What will I tell her about Brooks? Everything that, ha that has happened to me over these four years at Brooks needed to soak in. From the vivid image of my very first dinner on campus, crying into my plate with a girl who would turn out to be one of my best friends, to the inexplicable joy I felt this year, living in a dorm of 22 of the sweetest freshman girls, my Brooks experience has been nothing but a never-ending roller coaster. While there is debate on whether I've hated Brooks or not, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, I must clear up the fact that I hold this school near and dear to my heart. For all the times I said, man, I hate this school, <laughs> which is probably like four times a day, I take it back. We are all so fortunate to even have an education that I must value that this is one of the things Brooks has given me, an expansive education that has prepared me to wrestle with what is outside this so-called bubble. However, like all things and people in the world, there is always room for improvement and there is always room for change. Anyone that wants to improve upon this institution and its mission has love for it. So to all of you, whether you have three, two, or just one year left, Keep pushing for that change. The expectation for a student like me is to shut up. As a student on full financial aid, I shouldn't complain. I should be lucky I got here and stay reserved. And that is where some of y'all get it twisted. <laughs> I don't need money to address problems at hand. I have a voice for that. I will never drift back in a place that is supposed to give me the most meaningful education, and no one can get that without being challenged or being the challenger. Here is my first lesson. Brooks isn't Brooks without its students, so don't ever feel inadequate. Don't ever feel like this place does not need you, because it does. I remember walking into my Brooks interview straight up shook. A man sat there, and I'm not gonna lie, he was looking like Slender Man or something. <laughs> Except this lanky white guy had a face engraved with an awkward smile and light eyes that can really pierce into your own. Mr. McVeigh, with an <laughs> Mr. McVeigh, within just an hour, you brought me to a place I never knew existed without leaving the room. You truly were the beginning for me. You see how I just said a place I never knew existed? There are so many other young people, specifically in my case, so many other deserving young women of color whose perception of boarding school is an episode out of Zoe 101, or like one of Amirani's friends thought, that boarding schools take place on a boat. <laughs> um, there aren't many Mr. McVeigh circulating around to interview and bring students to Brooks. An alumnus who graduated in 1973 told me that during his time at Brooks, the limit was five black students. Now, although we may appear to be better in the sense of totals, when you look within the grades, we still rarely exceed five black students, except the junior class with a whopping high of seven. In the class of 2018, out of the 106 students, five students identify as African American, and just one of them is a girl. I'm the only black girl to graduate this year, and something about that statement has made me feel so alone. I'm not asking anyone to feel sorry for me, but instead to realize that we need to do better. This doesn't mean Brooks should solely diversify based off of racial, ethnic background, but it should acknowledge that for me and many other black and brown students who attend this school, it is already enough to be surrounded by a school whose history is built upon white men, and it is already enough to have five teachers that look like you, you see. Even the faculty doesn't exceed the five-person standard. So for all of you, remember that whether you are one of five or one of many, you have a place in this school. Also, 
Try and realize that many other students, just as great as we are, haven't had their beginning yet, and some never will. Lesson two, Brooks cannot have core values if we do not act upon them. Brooks has shown me that no matter how correct and how reasonable you think your perception and story is, there will always be someone to counteract that. As much as we strive to be an empathetic school, we struggle in the sense that when asked what empathy is, we groan and say the typical, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. <laughs> when in actuality, no one is capable of doing that because we all move through this world differently. The type of empathy our school needs to work on if we want to keep it as a core value is to never deny what someone has been through, to recognize that we can't focus on us being humans and what connects all of us because it is the differences that shed light upon understanding each other better. This being my last year at Brooks, it unsettled me to hear that we want feelings to be left out of conversation, whether it be in regards to politics or other difficult topics. How can we strive to be empathetic when people don't even want to hear feelings, lived experiences, and the things that shape the way we think and mold the role we play in the greater world? With our fellow Brookians making it clear that they don't want to bring feelings into these things, it almost implies that when you do, they simply aren't listening. And that has been my experience in and outside of classrooms, either silencing myself for the sake of getting through the day and not becoming the angry black girl, or speaking and being told I don't know what I'm talking about, for instance, by a teacher who has never put a cornrow in their own head. We still have so much time to educate ourselves, so no one should be speaking omnisciently. Whether it be music played at a dance or the way to resolve poverty in our country, grouping everyone together without taking into consideration the difference in upbringing and other crucial elements to identity can make one sound ignorant. Everyone at Brooks enjoys the music at dances, which is hard to believe given how bare the room always looks, or <laughs> it takes just three rules to get out of poverty. These statements, while seeming perfectly normal, always leave out multiple narratives. This is something I'm working on myself, even when it is hard to listen to things on the flip side, like my friend Jacob likes to tell me. <laughs> Lesson three, keep your inner child alive. I wanna show you someone. <laughs> um, that girl up there was commonly called Jada, and she loved to sing and dance. I could sing the whole musical Chicago with dance moves that were pretty intense for an eight-year-old, but my mother always let me rock. As you may be able to tell, I trashed my passion for singing and dancing when I got to Brooks, except on the rare occasion when more than one Cardi B song plays at a dance. Oh wait, that's never happened before. I show you this little girl, not just to keep up with the theme of baby pictures, but to tell you that I strive to keep the pure joy of this child within me, no matter how old I get. I look at this baby girl raised and uplifted by such strong women who have given me things I could never repay them for, and it motivates me to work 10 times as hard. Not just because I have to in our society, but because I want my mother to push the days of working numerous jobs to the back of her mind, and for my grandma to be able to fly to Hawaii or South Carolina to see her only living brothers. I wanna work hard so that my autistic cousin knows she can always live with me. I want to work hard so my aunt can depend on someone besides herself, and I want to work hard so my brother can see that his little sister has grown up. Regardless of these long-term aspirations, during study hours or grind time, I put on full-blown concerts for myself, still jamming and dancing like I did when I was a kid. Even withstanding all the grown-up responsibilities we eventually all have to take on, try and keep the things that made you so overjoyed as a kid around. It may teach you about who you are today. Lesson four, say I love you. For this lesson, you don't need a significant other. All you need is yourself. At Brooks, beauty is measured by style, hair, eyes, and who is the biggest butt. Initially, <laughs> initially, I didn't like who I was when I came to Brooks. It reminded me of my elementary days going to school on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. For non-New Yorkers, the Upper East Side is known to be the bougie part filled with very wealthy, very elite white people. Through a childhood of people asking if my mother was my nanny and never feeling white enough compared to my classmates, I've always had a hard time fitting into both of my racial identities. 
For those of you that don't know, my mother is this fine woman up here. <laughs> and this is my dad. The reason I would say I am more comfortable with the black side of me is due to the death of my father. When he died, it felt as though my white identity died along with it. Although my mother can make a mean corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day and works hard for me to acknowledge the white side of me, she is far from ever being an Irish-Italian dude. Even when I chemically damaged my hair so it could be permanently straight like everyone else or wished sometimes to be as dark as her so we didn't have to be asked so many questions, my mother said she loved me and I was beautiful and I can still depend on her to do that today. It wasn't until I got to Brooks that the challenges of being different gave me the ability to say I love you to myself. In a sea of straight blonde hair, vineyard vine whales dove from shirts and bright floral skirts flashed. These images overwhelmed me. It didn't compare to the Brooklyn community I came from, where box braids swung back and forth, and wearing a pair, a pair of jeans and the newest Jordans meant you were in dress code. But over the years, I realized I didn't want to be like everyone else, because I spent my whole life trying to do that. Although a lot of us enjoy getting some clout off of a fire Instagram post we just uploaded, we can't seek approval of others to love us before we love ourselves. During the times I am unable to mouth the words, here's what I do. Play your favorite hype up song as you're getting dressed. If you need a good suggestion, Motorsport by the Migos and Cardi B is mine. Um, <laughs> proceed to pace around your room preparing the best formal academic fit you can think of and pause a song when it is about to reach your favorite part. Put on your clothes and then press play and either dance like I do in the mirror as a way to start off conquering the day or just stand there nodding your head and admiring how damn good you look. <laughs> <laughs> this world isn't a kind, gentle place, so we all might as well be gentle to, gentle to ourselves and love ourselves to the point that no one can tell us different. Last lesson, as corny as it sounds, don't ever give up. When I think about unrecognized figures such as Frank Benson, the first African-American person to graduate from Brooks, to the class of Ms. Perkins with the first women to attend Brooks, we can't give up because what we put into the school makes history in one way or another. Our generation is filled with our future's newest innovators and thinkers. We will be the next ones to return to alumni panels and speak upon our Brooks experience to members of the class of 2050 or something crazy like that. I'm not saying that every late night doing homework is worth it, but I'm saying that we should reduce the amount of shoulda, woulda, couldas, like my mother says, and just get it done. Going into each year, my mom always asked me that summer if I wanted to return to Brooks the following year, and I said yes solely for one reason, because I knew I was capable of it, just like all of you are. Even when it seems unbearable one day, a new day is the opportunity to try again. Now back to that day I will come across within the next year. My Bates roommate and I are potentially playing some inspirational Drake song in the back, you know, to set the mood. And she asked me, so how was your high school? After laughing to myself a bit, I will probably say to her, it was challenging, but absolutely worth it. Thank you. <laughs>